supposedly serious news outlet Fox News is really scraping the bottom of the barrel in terms of like trying to find examples to point to that illustrate their point that the left is bad. This one is a bit of a reach. Um, we have to talk about this because it is just over the top to the point where it is indistinguishable from satire or parody. Uh, nonetheless, let me give you some context before I show you the Fox News clip. So Quillette journalist Jonathan K tweeted this out. So it turns out I've been using dog shampoo in my hair for the last few months. <laughs> I only discovered it. <laughs> I only discovered it when I ran out and needed to get more. This is partly my own fault, but it doesn't help that Arm and Hammer has the word pets in like four point typeface. I'm guessing this is common. <laughs> and I love that it gave way to this headline. Journalist mocked for using dog shampoo. <laughs> American politics is so stupid, so irredeemable. And the fact that I'm talking about that, this makes me part of the problem. Nonetheless, um, I don't know how you can accidentally use dog shampoo <laughs> when there's... <laughs> There's literally a picture of a dog on the fucking bottle. <laughs> and look, I have two dogs. I've never made this mistake. I've never had a difficult time distinguishing between human shampoo and dog shampoo. But apparently he responded to this critique saying, but John, it has a pic of a dog. Doesn't mean anything. Lots of shampoos I use in the past have pictures of waterfalls or people cleaning dishes or gauzily drawn women frolicking in pastures or dudes under waterfalls with chests provocatively projected outwards or whatever. Okay, but still, it had a picture of a dog on it and it was like a really big picture of a dog. Like we're not talking about one of those shampoo bottles that have like a picture of an apple because it smells like apple. Um, this was literally pet shampoo with a picture of a dog on it. To tweet about this, even if you're trying to be like intentionally self-deprecating, is really embarrassing. Nonetheless, a comedian and actor Seth Rogen decided to chime in. And um, this is where things take a turn for the funny because Seth Rogen responded saying, you're stupid. Kay then responded saying, trolled by Seth Rogen, achievement unlocked. Seth Rogen responded again by saying, I'm not trolling you. This was objectively stupid. I honestly have no clue who you are beyond this stupid tweet. Kay then responded saying, well, you celebrities seem like happy people. So you could tell at this point he's actually genuinely getting butt hurt. Seth then responded saying, for real though, what did you expect the reaction to be? Tons of people like, yeah, I also used dog shampoo by accident. Who doesn't? <laughs> that is too much. Kay then responded <laughs> saying, sorry for the delayed response. As I spent the day skating on a frozen pond with my kids. I don't know why you included that. Uh, but is this a serious question? My tweet was a self-deprecating knock at myself. Was using my dog shampoo by accident. <laughs> then expressed faux outrage at Arm and Hammer. Ha ha ha. I'm not a pro like you, so not every punchline lands. But was it not obvious that I was joking when I included the dishwasher reference? Even I know not to wash my hair with palm olive. You got 9 million followers. You're funny and smart, and I love your movies. But what you did here was just nasty. So I love this. Like, he's the embodiment of this meme. Like, the happy face. But behind the scenes, he's really crying. On the inside, he's, he's hurting. He started off just like trying to be like, oh, I was just kidding everyone. And then he like genuinely got upset because people were clowning on him. But I mean, again, I don't know what you expected. Like, I think that Seth Rogen's tweet put it best. Like, did he honestly believe people were going to be like, oh, well, sure. You know, I used dog shampoo before. Like, who does that? <laughs> and then who tweets about it after doing something that stupid? Um, so, uh, Seth Rogen then proceeded to do a little bit of research on him and followed up saying, John, I've read more about you since we talked and I found using dog shampoo isn't even remotely the stupidest thing you've done. Your writing is terrible and you disguise your dumb ideas with a thesaurus vocabulary. You, again, are stupid. This article was particularly dumb. And he points to an article written by Jonathan Kay 
where he argues that the storming of the US Capitol wasn't about white supremacy, whatever Canadian pundits say. Okay. So now this is where, believe it or not, the story gets even weirder because uh, Fox News picked up the story and they talk about an angle that I missed where this journalist's mom jumped in and defended him against Seth Rogen. Not kidding. Jonathan Kay is a senior editor at the online magazine Quillette, which is always an interesting uh, read. Over the years, he's written big, meaty essays on all the big subjects. War, pestilence, social justice, gender dysphoria, Inuit whale hunting. And none of it went anywhere until the other day when he did a throwaway tweet revealing that for the last three months he'd accidentally been washing his hair with his dog's shampoo. And next thing you know, big-time Hollywood star Seth Rogen and small-time lefty hack Keith Olbermann and the rest of the blue checker were pounding on him. Jonathan Kay uh, joins us uh, tonight. Uh, Jonathan, as I think you put it in one of your tweets, uh, this, this escalated rather quickly. Yeah, <laughs> it was really strange. It, it was supposed to be this self-deprecating joke and, uh, you know, I, I tweeted it and then I, I don't know, I think I walked my dog and then I checked my phone. It was like Seth Rogen was <laughs> calling me names. It, it was a very surreal way to spend my Sunday morning. And then uh, that thing that happens that you really don't want when you're in a Twitter spat with Seth Rogen is that your mum decided to chip up on chip in on your behalf and suggest that he work this into a subplot for his next movie, and you didn't appreciate that. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's not a good look uh, when family members jump in. Uh, but I was very disappointed in Seth. And by the way, I just you know at first. Uh, you know, my response to him was like, look, maybe this guy's going through a bad thing. He got into spats with with, with certainly people who are more famous than me, like Gad Saad and uh, Rudolph Giuliani. And I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. I said, hey, look, I love your movies. You know, you know, maybe you're having a bad weekend or something like oh. that. And but at, like I kind of gave him the opportunity to say, hey, you know what? You're, I'm, I, I have nine million followers and here I am chasing down some random Toronto journalists, you're right, I'm, I'm being stupid. I'm the one being stupid, but he, he, never, he never got to that point. It was really, um, it was disappointing. I like Seth Rogen's movies. Well, I was disappointed. He, no, he seems no, like a nice no, guy don't. when you look him on screen. This is, no, no, this is unbecoming of you, because he went, he, he said, I thought you were the most stupid guy on the planet for the dog shampoo thing. And then he Googles you and he finds you were in, you, you didn't think the January 6th thing was a white supremacist insurrection. And then he starts beating up on you for that. So it's not just that you're a guy who wears dog shampoo, but then he discovers that you're a dog shampoo, racist, hater, white supremacist, too. Don't don't apologize and say nice things about Seth Rogen's lousy movies, Jonathan. Well, look, by the way, I just I, I tried to make it clear to him and said, look, you're misunderstanding the title of the article you're referring to. I myself, Mark, you of all people know this, I myself can be a very sanctimonious leftist. And so I expected that there would be some solidarity expressed between uh, urban Jewish sanctimonious leftists, but apparently there's none. And I, uh, I'm, I'm actually more disappointed than angry. Really? Fuck off. <laughs> I'm actually more disappointed than angry. Whatever, dude. Conservatives are really, really fucking weird. And if it wasn't already embarrassing enough that his mom jumped in to defend him from Seth Rogen, who was making fun of him for using dog shampoo, he thought it was a good idea to literally go on Fox News to talk about this further. This man is an absolute sucker for punishment. This must be his fetish. And I'm not here to king shame anyone, but Jesus Christ, if you're not actually trying to embarrass yourself, then you've just, you've got to do better. I don't know what to say. Like, this is really fucking weird stuff. Like, conservatives 
are really going out of their way to paint the left, not that Seth Rogen is a good example of the left, but they're trying to paint the left as like overly aggressive and antagonistic and you can't even joke anymore without the leftist coming after you and attacking you and calling you a white supremacist. But like your entire article, your entire segment was undermined by the fact that you're just making yourself look fucking stupid by even talking about this. Like, Fox News, the number one news network in America, picked up a story about how a celebrity was mean to a conservative journalist because he used dog shampoo in his hair. Like, is this real life? Are we serious here? Now, a different reporter actually tweeted out an image uh, with the segment because, of course, seeing the headline, adult journalist's mom defends him from Seth Rogen, that's just objectively hilarious. I don't care who you are. Seth Rogen actually saw it. And, you know, then Jonathan Kay, of course, tried to play it cool again. Uh, you could tell that he was really mad because he was responding to basically every single person in his mentions who was dunking on him. And it's just, I don't know what to say about this. I'm a little bit ashamed of myself for even talking about this uh, because this is that stupid of a story. But it's just like, it really shows you that Fox News and the right, they will go to any length to play the victim, even if it's the dumbest instance imaginable. Like, even if somebody who does something extremely fucking stupid and uses dog shampoo and then tweets about it, uh, you know, that is where they have to use that example, that conservatives are the victims. Don't you think that you can, like, find a different example? Isn't there some other, like, cancel culture story that you could be covering if you really wanted to demonize the left and have people take you seriously? Like, this... This segment that we saw from Fox News was indistinguishable from a parody, and the dude who was the host sounds exactly like Kyle Kalinske's smug elitist character. Oh, well, I do declare, sir. Like, it sounds exactly like that. So, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, a conservative journalist used dog shampoo in his hair and then tweeted about it, and then people made fun of him, and then he played the victim, and Fox News picked up the story, and his mom defended him. Okay, it's time to take a break from Twitter.